today we'll be talking about how to create a terminal inside your browser now you must be wondering why would i ever need a terminal to be based inside my browser when i already have an app for my terminal inside my pc well the reason for this is probably to add your own authentication layer before passing on to the passing on the access of the terminal to other users another one could be probably you're developing some developer tools which requires an embedded terminal to be inside another could be probably that you're creating an online ide which requires you to access terminals well, there could be multiple use cases for creating such a terminal we'll be using amazon's ec2 to host our server and the terminal that we'll be accessing will be based inside the aws machine of the front end we'll be using nextjs well nextjs is not really important but then that's what i'm really familiar with and have been using for a really long time we'll be using xterm for the user interface of the terminal and we'll be using child processes inside node.js to spawn different terminals the communication protocol that we'll be using is websockets now i'll be covering websockets and child processes in this video i'll i'll give you a little brief about them so you don't have to worry about it if you don't really know it i'll also be linking a few videos and articles below if you want to get a deep view on how child processes and websockets work all right so for this project we'll be using turbo repo turbo repo lets you initialize mono repos mono repos are a way for you to initialize multiple applications inside a single repository so in this case it will help us initialize our next js project which is our front end and our and our server which is an express project in this case one of the great things about turbo repo is that it has a lot of example projects which you can use to directly initialize your projects let's see some of the examples that they have if any of them suit our use case next js design system kitchen sink multiple frameworks both back end and front end probably this is what we should be using docker non mono repo yeah i think kitchen sink is what we should be using it has let's see the application it has an api which is perfect and it has a store front which will probably be the our front end great right, let's see how it's looking like i'll be using webstorm as my id for this project but you can use any id you are comfortable with let's get rid of the admin project and the blog project in fact we'll also be getting rid of the um storefront project and we'll be initializing our own nextjs project inside this right we have initialized our application web which is probably a little wrong it should be initialized inside the apps so let's move it over there all right now that everything is set up let's see how running the application looks like we'll be using npm dev which runs in turn runs turbo run dev and turbo run dev just runs all the uh, required development functions that are inside your application localhost 3000 let's install the dependency Now you the way you install a dependency inside a mono repo especially a pnpm mono repo is by filtering it out using the project name so since i have named my project web i'll be using the filter web now what this will do is that it will only install the dependency xterm inside my project web that's all Once that is done, we'll be adding the Xterm. We'll be integrating Xterm inside our application. Let's start by creating a components folder inside which we'll be having the terminal dev, the terminal Xterm. X terminal. Let's see how it's being used. First, we need to initialize the terminal instance. Now, since var it. should never be used inside any javascript project we won't be using it we'll be shifting it to const and the reason for initializing it outside the component is so that the reference to this terminal will always be the same 
we won't be really reinitializing them uh, on each re-render. Right, this is what is required to see the project, to see the terminal. Now, this is something that should probably be inside a use effect block. Now, to reference this terminal which has the id terminal we won't be using document or get element by id rather we'll be using the hook use ref to get the div itself now since we are using typescript we'll also have to make sure that the use ref has the appropriate types for taking the reference of a div Since terminal ref is the only dependency, that's what we'll be using. Let's take this div. Let's export this terminal inside our page or TSX. We'll probably get an error. Yes, you're importing component that needs use effect and these need to be a client component that is we need to mark our component with use client which component the the x terminal component needs to be marked as a use client because this requires react hooks and react hooks work only on the client side right they won't be rendered on the server side now we should probably be see a, being seeing our dev yes so we can see our dev this is how it's looking we also should probably import the styles that xterm provides yes looking much better all right the ui setup was pretty easy right now we'll be looking at how we'll be connecting the front end to the back end now the way that we can handle this is probably by using an http request and response we have the front end and a server and we can have our front end send requests whenever the user hits enter to the back end for the back end to process the command inside the terminal and then hit us, hit us back with the response of whatever the terminal has processed now the problem with this whole request response cycle is that there's a lot of overhead in sending each and every HTTP request. To avoid this overhead and have a system that actually communicates in real time, has a bi-directional flow of data. Anytime you hear, you hear bi-directional and real time, your brain should go towards the communication protocol called WebSocket. Now, what is WebSocket exactly? Like the definition says, WebSocket is a technology that is that makes it possible to open a two-way interactive communication session between the user's browser and a server. Now, technically, it doesn't happen only between a user browser and a server. It can happen between two servers as well. So, WebSockets are really useful when you have data that is streaming through to you, to you and you want your UI or anything that you're that you're using the data for to be updated in real time. For example, any live scores that you see, they are receiving constant events from the backend using WebSockets, and those events are what is what are being used to update your UI. For setting up a WebSocket server, we'll be using the library WS, which stands basically for WebSockets. This is the I think the cold standard library that is being used for web implementing WebSocket servers inside a Node.js project. The way to use a WebSocket server is to initialize it first. And this is exactly what we'll be doing right now. Great. Now we'll be listening on every WebSocket event. First, we'll be listening on the connection. And then we'll be listening on every message that is being coming to us. Great. All right. Let's try connecting to it using Postman. Voila, we connected. And if we pass in a message, what do we get back? We get back hi. All right. So this is working. 
All right. Now that the WebSocket server is set up, what we need is a way for our Node project, a Node server, to fork pseudo terminals. This is where child processes come in. Now, what are child processes inside Node? So, there are basically four different types of child processes, which are spawn, fork, exec, and exec file. Since Node.js is single threaded, we cannot have multiple threads running on it. For this, we introduce child processes. Child processes allow us to bypass the single thread nature of Node.js and run any process on a separate thread apart from the main thread. How will this child process be useful to us? Well, we'll be using child processes to fork pseudo terminals and pass commands to those terminals and get the responses back and then stream them back to the user using WebSockets. For now, for us to spawn the child process by ourselves and then pass it to the terminal, the appropriate commands would be a little out of scope. So what we can do is actually use a library called node PTY, which exactly does what we actually need right now which is forking pseudo terminals in Node.js. Now, this is a library which is being used in, uh, I guess, VS Code as well to emulate the terminal. Now, what we want from a WebSocket server is that whenever we receive an event called command, we should pass the uh, payload of that command to the terminal process that's running. Now, how can we do all that? Let's see. First, what we'll need is we we'll need a way for uh, us to spawn the terminal. Now, this is how the terminal is, is spawned using a uh, PTY. And I want this terminal to be a new terminal to be spawned each time there's a new WebSocket connection that is being formed. Right? Now, uh, since I am in Mac OS, I'll be directly using a uh, bash and I'll be removing the unnecessary uh, arguments that are being passed to the spawn function. Now we want to listen on each message, which has the type command and pass that command to the PTY. This is how we'll be handling the data type, the message of type command. We'll be first passing uh, the message using json.parse because anything that we receive from a WebSocket will always be in the format of a string. And then we'll be passing the command to PTY using PTY process dot write. What PTY process dot write does is that it writes to the terminal using STDIN, which is basically it types into the terminal, whatever data that you're sending to it. Let's try this out. So this is a type command. The data will be ls let's try it out send ls great so this is working perfectly now what we want is we want whatever the pty is processing that on data we get from here we want it not we don't want to write it out anywhere rather we want to use this data and pass it to the ui the front end for it to print on our uh, emulated terminal. So what we'll be doing is we'll take this and on data, we will send this as an object to our front end. And this is all that is required to handle all our terminal requests and commands that we receive from our front end and then send them back to the back end. Let's see how we'll be connecting to our backend using WebSockets from the web frontend. To handle WebSockets on a client side, we don't need to install any packages because WebSockets are native to browsers. So all we really need is the WebSocket keyword and we can use that to connect to a real backend WebSocket server. Now that web, our WebSocket has been initialized, we'll be looking on each on message that we receive from the WebSocket and we'll be checking if the event or data is of type data 
and then if it is of right beta then we'll be simply piping that data to the terminal and then we'll be able to visualize it using our uh, x term now another thing that we should keep in mind is that we should close this web socket connection whenever the x term uh, functional component dismounts a thing that i forgot over here is that event dot data will always be in the format of a string so we should probably uh, go ahead and parse it using json dot parse and call it const data now if data dot type is equal to data then we should go ahead and write this to our terminal let's see how it's looking great this is exactly how it's supposed to be looking i mean it's not perfect because the ui is a little wonky over here and the length is too large i guess for the terminal to handle but then yeah i'm connected to my macbook's terminal using just a web socket connection from my browser all right now that we are sure that we are receiving all events that are coming from the back end to on the front end and we are also processing it and displaying it on the terminal we'll be making sure that we can also send commands from our front end to the back end because that was the whole goal of the project right we want to emulate a terminal on the front end so this is how it will be done so term has an on key function which has an event now this event has e dot uh, uh, and a property called key this key is basically what we want to be passed to the back end that is the any character that we are typing into the our keyboard or uh, into our terminal ls ls cd great i was able to travel through my file structure using a cd command and uh this terminal is completely working and i mean it's it's like perfect so if i have even if i have any uh, errors it will probably point that out that probably doesn't exist like hg key i don't know yeah the command not found and yeah that was all about this video um in the next video we'll be covering how we can deploy this web socket server on an ec2 machine and how we can use some security mechanisms to handle all the user uh, commands that are coming through to us it's all for this video see you in the next one